speak loudly uh, yeah so the so the topic is a choice of our vice chancellor so he was a uh, dean here uh, and a student here and he uh, told me that this is a topic that i must get uh, so so there you are which vice chancellor here or who is an astrophysicist right uh, May, may have even taught you sometime. No, probably not. Show up. Any of these folks. Okay. Show up. Show up. Right. Yeah. So, Rudan is the only one who, who oh, helps right. us. Yeah. yeah. In classes, he's from us. So, Ashoka um, is a very new university, um, just 10 years old. Uh, computer science is three years old, three and a half years old. But uh, we do have interdisciplinary programs, degree programs with computer science, with mathematics, philosophy, physics, biology. Uh, so you can do degrees in CS plus X and two with maths. So we have two programs with maths, two with philosophy, one with physics. And we are starting one with economics and mathematics. And uh, so do consider us for graduate studies. Um, so you can, um, in Ashoka, the advantage is that even if you have studied physics, you can probably shift to computer science or even biology. Pradeep uh, did physics and then shifted to biology. And really, I should say, but, uh, uh, but yes. So, uh, yeah, coming to this talk. So, machine learning. So, machine learning is a is a simple framework, right? So, you have got a function. Just assume that you have got a function. F x is equal to y. Y is the outcome. X is the input, right? And you estimate the functions from large number of examples of X and Y. So you're given large number of X and Y pairs, right? A very large number of them. And you try to estimate what the function F may look like. Right? 
Now, this is a simple sounding framework, but this has profound impact on your lives, right? Apparently also my life, but um, I think that it will impact your life in ways uh, unimaginable, right? I mean, you will probably have self-driving cars. I suffer uh, a fright of an aircraft landing using this framework. So if you're flying a Boeing aircraft um, that lands using machine learning these days, a 777, the larger ones, cannot be manually landed. So it has to learn with a machine learning framework. Um, you know, someday your enemy state may throw a weapon at you, like we did on Bala Court, right? And um, it will detect presidency college if it ever gets bombed using a machine learning software with exactly this framework. Um, that's a that's a that's an extreme example, but they um Popping exams so in chat GPT. I don't know if you started doing that, uh, but uh, right, that's also the same framework that uh, predict what language model is. Some people are also using this to write academic papers, which are getting accepted in general. So, uh, yeah, I mean, because maybe the referring is also being done by AI. Referring is done by AI. I'm not so sure, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, could I move forward? Um, and then, okay. Uh, so I'll cover two things, right? There are two ways in uh, AI can affect uh, the ethical consequences of AI. And one is uh, reliability. Just uh, you do data-driven interpretation, data-driven model building. Uh, and reliability is, of course, an issue. It has impacted all of us in a very serious way. So I'll talk about this a little bit. And uh, so doing unreliable AI, you know, uh, self-driving car is, um, is terrible. No. I mean, we also kill uh, when we drive, but uh, getting killed by an AI with sample from a tail of a probability distribution is not nice. Um, the other issue is that, that most of our lives are now being decided by AI, by converting human beings to a score and then deciding that whether you're fit for admission, whether you're fit for um, insurance, whether you're fit for uh, what is your credit rating, or what is your rating as a human being, and so on and so forth. So those are the second part that I'll discuss that in the second part of the talk a little bit. Okay, so I'll start with an example uh, of COVID. So this is the DSP super model, right? This is, uh, this is the official model for COVID um, by the Department of Science and Technology. Uh, one author is a very close friend, uh, Manindra Garwal. He is also credited with the best ever scientific result from this country. Uh, he proved that uh, primality testing can be done very fast in polynomial time. This was a problem that was open for 2,300 years, posed by Euclid. And, uh, solved by Manindra, so you can't get more fundamental than that. The other one was a teacher of mine, right? Professor Vidyasan, and uh, actually taught me machine learning many, many years back. And uh, so this model, uh, let me just explain the model. So it had, uh, you know, categories like infected, uh, remove, remove this if you die or you get better. And uh, infected was a two part. Symptomatically infected and asymptomatically infected. And uh, of course, there's a category of dying. And people moved around between these categories at various rates, right? And those rates were determined by um, gamma, eta, uh, epsilon, beta. So beta is the probability that I'll spread COVID infection to the one, right? Gamma is a modus recovery rate. So those are the, the simple models. And there's a coupled set of differential equations uh, that um, model this rate, right? That's a, that's, a, that's a very straightforward model, four parameters uh, across this. And with this model, they looked at RT-PCR records, hospital death records, and they predicted that COVID is over in India in 2020, January, February, right? And that was it, that we are we are over, we are done with COVID. And uh, 
So this is their prediction. So they had six epochs. So between uh, 20 and 20, March 20 to February 21, roughly one year, they broke it up into two months epoch. And four parameters described each epoch. Right? So there are there are 24 parameters in all to be estimated from a very large amount of amount of data for a very slowly varying COVID curve. Right? So the top COVID curve is the national curve of the number of radar at the infection grew and the radar at which infection died out. The bottom part, the two hump curve, uh, curve is the COVID in Delhi. And note that in each epoch, it was just a straight line. Right? Mm -hmm. So you're fitting four, a straight line using four parameters. So obviously, you're overfitting, right? There's a possibility of overfitting. And such a slowly varying data, almost anything, a cubic polynomial or even a quadratic polynomial would have explained this in a short epoch. And this model informed public policy in India, whether to buy vaccine, whether to order vaccine, whether to not order vaccine, right? And predicted that COVID is over in 2020. And you know what happened the next year, right? They also said that if the lockdown, initial lockdown of three months did not happen, we would have 13 million infections and 3 million dead. We probably ended up next year with 10 million dead. Right? And um, yeah, so this was uh, at best, an unreliable model, you know, model, uh, there's the kindest you can say to it, uh, you can say worse things. So there was no biology in it. So all, all the biology or immunology of getting better was folded into one parameter called recovery rate, right? Um, so all about, you know, protein biology and how diseases spread and what is um, the transport of disease that was spread into one parameter called beta. And, Data science was used to estimate it. Um, so you can ask many questions that whether a beta by gamma, beta is the infection rate, gamma is the recovery rate. If R0 is less than one, then you um, have gotten rid of COVID. If R0 is more than one, then it will explode. Um, so the question is, does, does such steady state model even make sense? Um, do we have R0 that is valid in um, North Calcutta, which will also hold in South Calcutta, let alone whole of Delhi? Um, have you reached ergodic steady state? I don't know. How are you doing causal interpretability? So there are a whole lot of questions that you could ask about those models, uh, which were not asked by not only by the researchers, but the general science community. And uh, this was a most amazing curve that I've seen. This is uh, this was a Niti Aayog uh, member secretary health's presentation uh, on how COVID will. Growth. So these bars are the actual data, infection data, and that curve fitting. Um, so this curve shows that COVID is ending in June 2020. Right? Um, from there, the actual pollution landed up there. So this I won't even talk about, but that's data science, you know, of Niti Aayog. This paper was by a very close friend of ours, um, you know, both Shekhar Mandi. Shekhar Mandi. Current science, right? Uh, uh, so I'm presenting these names because they're very close friends, right? I mean, they won't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> they're a very famous guy. And Shoj Manindra. Uh, currently, yeah. So because he's not such a close friend, I didn't mention him. <laughs> so Shekhar. Close friends. Yeah, Shekhar one day, um, we were in hostel with Pradeep and I, and he introduced me to my wife, and we speak a language that. Uh, cannot be spoken in civilized world. So, uh, so Shekhar published this paper in Current Science and I had a discussion with him. So what, I mean, it's very small print, but I'll tell you what the uh, data is. So this was a regression study, multivariate regression on, on again COVID data from across the world. And uh, Shekhar and Current Dekar tried to suggest that we are not dying in COVID in large numbers compared to the Germans and the Irish and the French and the English who are dying like insects. I mean, at the initial stage of COVID, we were not getting infected at a very high rate, right, in 2020. Uh, so this paper came in 2020, December. Whereas, um, uh, no, hell had broken loose in Europe. So people were setting up ICs and staircases and, and so on and so forth. So this paper suggested that this is because we have innate, because we live in hell. 
we have innate immunity against COVID, right? Yeah. And, and they try to say that countries with low per capita GDP are better are better protected against COVID, right? So this was a current science paper that came out, turned out to be catastrophically false because our per capita death rate turned out to be the highest in the world two years down the line. And this was again pure data science. There was no biology out there. From a biologist, right? There was absolutely no um, other input from any other source. It was just no immunology, but a claim on immunity based on pure data. So, um, so it turns out. So you know, you can read the paper. It's current science paper. Uh, hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The type of data is talking about it. Hmm. We have to go with changing, ever changing with time. So yeah. now that we're taking care of that. No, so and when you say a parameter like without down, it's no, so when you do a model, uh, so even if you do a good model, for example, right? Not a bad model. You have to uh, take into account what would be a good model. A good model would be the model that is not in its steady state, it's dynamic. It will make it very complex, right? The never changing model. So no steady state of stability has, has reached, right? So we model this as a large graph of human beings, each with a probability of spreading an infection to the other. And it's a sparsely connected graph. You know, my evidence is spread infection to Narendra Modi is zero, so I'm not connected to this. So I can spread infection only to maybe over 15 or 20 unfortunate people, right? Some of them students. But uh, so this, this model will be a very difficult model to simulate. Right? And suppose you could simulate. There's a possibility that you could simulate. How would you validate that you're simulating from yourself? Right? So there is no way to validate this, right? Because you're predicting future view. And uh, so even if your model was there, which was a low probability event with all the simulation. Your possibility of validating that model was zero. There was no scientific way of validating it. So using such a model to inform policy, my, my colleague at Ashoka Gautam Manager, many of you know, right? Um, there are people from CATEC who do this. So, uh, um, so it turned out, looking back one year down the line, that none of them were bad people. You know, with, part of the intention. But uh but you know doing science and the prediction writing the paper is completely different is different from informing policy or putting something out in public life. And the amount of uh, care and consideration that is required for any of these for being a part while it's while it's Why do I bring it up? I bring it up here because you're deploying AI model into medical diagnosis, into autonomous car, into aircraft, just like that, you know, one after the other. And my discipline, computer science, is the most Right? I mean, those are not as open as COVID, but they're there. Right? If you go to the US and buy a Tesla, that is a decision for you that drives uh, the traffic for you. <coughs> Someday, uh, some AI software will tell a doctor that I can diagnose better. And many doctors will believe in it. They'll definitely tell you that I can write that access to the better than you. Right? I yes. mean, Netflix already decides which movie I should watch. But, uh, yeah. but you know, it turns out that in um, IIT, we did a study, that if you take your economics paper and just put the PDF in CAD DVD, that everybody can get about eight in an undergraduate microeconomic source, right? Um, apparently, it doesn't work in computer science, thankfully for us, but uh, for many subjects. You have to see if it works in astrophysics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we'll have to trail. This one, I know, I was required to intervene. There was a thing called Arup I don't know if you know. So this was um, almost mandatory. Uh, so we had to carry this even to travel to move the yeah. plane. And this said that, you know, if my phone was in proximity with her phone, there's a probability that I spread COVID infection to her, right? 
Now, due to, to uh, COVID infection spread, there's a leap of faith. You know, there is no theory that, that suggests, you know, for example, if I have it in my back pocket, right? If I'm standing behind her, she has it in front, and I have it in my back pocket, there are two human bodies between. You know? Bluetooth will tell that we are very far separated because most of our bodies are water, if you believe the biologists. Okay, right? and that is blocked really away. So, um, and I'm literally breathing COVID down her neck. So, in an appeal. On the other hand, if you are very far apart, with nothing between us, both of us holding our phone from our hand across the road, the chance of spreading COVID is zero to each other. But this will say that we are very, very close approximately. So, if you try to compute uh, the error rates, the false positives and the false negatives in that prediction, you will find that there will be close to 50 percent, and that's the definition of random level. When you have got 50 percent false positive and 50 percent false negative, then that is random level. Right? And um, a little bit of calculation study that we did is this is exactly right? that's how that's how good it is. And you know, much of our national policy was based on based on that. And these are all data-driven system with a very going away, the other theory that should come from immunology, from, from aerosol, from fluid mechanics, so, yeah. how much the virus travels on aerosol, and so on and so forth. Okay, so um, the models these days are far more complex, right? And uh, so this is what a modern deep learning machine model is. So when you talk about the function f that you're trying to estimate, the function f is modeled by something like this, right? Which are where each unit is a neuron, that's a sigmoid function, and uh, they're connected with each other through waves. Right? And now, this was one of the earlier ones with eight layers. And now, if you have resonant 100, that's 100 layers. Right? And that's what uh, a typical deep learning machine will have 100 layers out there. And over 100 million parameters, this one had over 100 million parameters. Uh, to recognize 1,000 image categories, and uh, this is called AlexNet, and over 1 billion um, uh, labeled images were used for training. This is what was the situation 10 years back. Now, you have GPT-4, for which you have to pay $20 to be able to use your laptop so that it can answer your astrophysics questions. Um, it will do very well, by the way. So what someone tells me, Right? Uh, with all due respect to your teachers, it may sometimes do as well as you see. And clearing your doubts and so on. So you can try it. So this is called a large language model, right? Uh, which is what? Which is every word that has ever, ever been written in English um, and has made it to a PDA. The last hundred years has gone to change this up. Right? This large language model. It has got um, Eight models with 20 billion parameters in each. So that's over five trillion parameters, right? <clears throat> to do conversational English. Uh, very good. So if you say that uh, my today's event that you know, I came to person in the morning and by traveling in this bus, I sweated and suffered the heat. Then I went and ate this food from the canteen and now I'm eating listening to a stupid lecture. Now, narrate all this in the style of tension, right? So, you know, actually, it's a very good job. Actually, actually, today, you know, today in the language of tension, you know, I will not talk about it will uh, be very good. You know, fairly good. And uh, so, most conversations, uh, it can do correctly. It can do terms correctly. In mathematics and number theory, Almost all repeat programs that you can ask anybody to write. So if you say that I want a web page, but it says that I want a web page with my photograph out there, or my publication is in this box file, put it up in this section, I, and these are the courses that I have taught, put them up like this. It will make the web page for you in 30 seconds, and uh, you can just put it in there. And you can say that my web page is in WordPress and my web page is in this. So these kind of routine tasks can be easily. Or you can say that I've got the seven, eight Excel files, collate all the data, find all correlations, plot all these graphs, and you will do that. Right? And 
really. So that's a lot of time is more. That's why I, um, and you know, the fear is that it will take away more jobs, losing jobs. Programmers are not required anymore because that will be the right standard program very well. Um, companies are figuring out how best to that you create into their systems and Google is threatening to print out them, which is better than that. Right? Uh, so, uh, yeah, so these will impact our lives in, in ways that we cannot understand. So, uh, vision, because that's what I've worked on most, I've not worked on languages so much, so I have forced to work on language. You can't ignore languages. Right? So, languages, we are told there is no need to learn graph. It's a completely irrelevant. Right? Spelling is even worse. Those are meaning. So uh, you just say what you want in however bad English and say that I wanted in the language of God Bad, right? And uh, British Oxford English. Sadly, we will do that. So uh, you know, there are lots of people, I think, colleagues, who are saying that okay, here is my paper introduction, it's three pages. Put it into one and a half page, same material, and try to do that. Right? And say that. So, uh, so we cannot ignore that anymore. But this is an example from Bishop. So, you know, somebody found out after the initial success of Alexnet that this is a husky dog. It was getting classified as a wolf. Most huskies were getting classified as a wolf. People were not complaining because this dog does look like a wolf, a little bit, right? But then somebody tried to look at that. Why is this dog so consistently getting classified as a wolf? What is the reason? And we got a pixel from the image that were continuing to the classification. It so turned out that these were the pixels that is, uh, that is um, contributing. And these pixels were contributing because most images of wolf and husky, they were taken in Canada in this data set and they were coming from snow. So it learned how to call snow. There's a high correlation between snow and a wolf. And when you start snow, it's called a wolf. Really? Yes. yes. And got 99% accurate on a testing data set in Canada. Now, Canada, only a madman and Eskimo live there. So, yes, and now you see a lot of snow. Right? And uh, if you take images that are biased in some strange way. So, it is not that a machine learning system understands when it speaks English. Right? It is just producing this English word which is correlated, very strongly correlated. So it's a correlation driven methodology. There is no underlying semantic interpretation of it, right? Whether it's of English or of language. So these kinds of consequences are, uh, are very common. This example is a, a couple of very young ladies from my lab. Uh, so we had sent them to. Uh, so I work with radiology department today, and we have sent them to uh, classify viral and bacterial pneumonia. Uh, automatic diagnosis of viral and bacterial pneumonia. And after some hard work to be done in the summer, when I was absent, they came and reported 99 percent accuracy on the infections. And uh, we tested a little bit, turned out that is right. Uh, our radiological laboratory was very excited that um, public, right? Public in radiology is the then the best journal of radiology. Then uh, another student from my lab figured out that look what it is doing is that whenever the X-ray is taken in a horizontal position, that is supine, so it's calling a pneumonia. And all is X-ray, it is calling it uh, pain. No, no, this is possible. Really. So anybody who actually who was so ill that had to be extracted in the horizontal position was probably a very ill person. And you know, in AIMS, the probability is very high when you picked up AIMS. So just that it for all that is learned was you know the, 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 the position in which X-ray was taken. And uh, what did you learn from the patient? This is you are a rocket. <laughs> no, it wasn't. So these were very young persons. And uh, it's easy to make mistakes. I mean, they were pretty elbow uh, girls. But look, correlation, high correlation can have any reason. Not always that you find high correlation means that your data is correct. So, so there are it is very easy to go to have unreliable. 
So it requires to be a law of evaluation and measurement, which is much stronger than we are normally used to in banks. Okay. And uh, I don't think that it's properly understood that. Uh, no, before you deploy, you know, publishing a rubbish paper is one thing, but uh, type it in factor, but before you uh, put it out, there's a so somebody asked this question now. This is a this is a whale that um, got classified as a whale, right? Um, so this was a part of the arithmetic that was trained on CN. And somebody asked the question that what is the maximum minimum amount of noise that I need to add? To this image so that the classification is different right so this is the original image of the image plus noise and k is the classification function so the class they are put in different classes so what is the minimum amount of noise that i need to add and you can solve this optimization problem turns out that's a little and if you add to the noise to that that's the image that you get right so the top image gets classified as a wave, but this gets classified as a sum of the things. Let's take it out of the way. And then look exactly the same. And this is the noise. The noise is very little, right? Hardly any. Uh, so now people have done one pixel error. So there is one pixel error that is possible. That they ask the question that uh, change one pixel in the image, right? To cause a misclassification. Now what this shows is that the function that it is learning as a way, the large data set is another steady function. You know, minor perturbation to the to the image can make it go to another class or to well. Right? And these attacks can be orchestrated to position. Now imagine making a landing of him, right? To kill 600 people, all I have to do is to make it classify a jungle like or the sea as a jungle, right? Uh, and that kind of language is very possible, right? I mean, if you are landing things, or if you are sending a missile to Balakur, say that is identify one building 200 kilometers away and bomb this out of a cluster of buildings, now GPS cannot work. It doesn't have that kind of an accuracy, the accuracy of time. The ultimate your target resolution will have to be visual. And if you indeed this type of thing, that sends a while of the 200 kilometers into Pakistan to pick a target. It did it visually, right? And the cost is that that if you take instead of this target that one, then you're in violation of the end of the series. Whether that matters anymore, I don't know. <laughs> 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 but uh, but yeah, that's the thing that can happen, right? Those are the consequences of the adversarial attack that can happen. This is somebody asked that uh, okay, if both attacks are possible. Can I find an image that is close to B? Can I find an image that is close to a fish? But whose classification is close to a dog? Right? So that's an optimization problem. Can I solve that? The answer is yes. Very easy. So I said that in you know, space of all these images, such an image that will look in some norm, you know, may not be the two norm, maybe in one norm, they look very close to. Um, a fish, but we will get classified as a dog. And you know, so, so those are the examples. Right? You can make them get classified as a dog. So these perturbations are unstable. When it's unstable in images, we will also be unstable in So you can say the following thing that the probability of that image naturally occurring, we did a study, probability of that image naturally occurring is zero. Close to zero. So while I can add a noise and make it go to another class, this noise is not a natural noise. It doesn't, it's not a natural. This noise cannot be caused by a camel. Right? So the defender of machine learning will say that yes, you can attack it, but this kind of an attack is not going to be yes. realistic because uh, no camera will add this kind of noise, right? Uh, yeah, uh, but there are questions about uh, about stability that um, that are there. So bias bias can come in various different ways. You know, you are taking uh, you know we work on breast cancer. Um, so I have got two systems for breast cancer, deployed at AIMS. 
Um, so breast cancer is a tricky one because breast cancer, there's very little screening that happens to me here. And uh, it's a big killer. And very well, you do miss small tumors. So sometimes there's a very small tumor which does not pop, but next year it has become a full grown uncontrollable tumor. And when you pull out the screening mammogram one year before, in hindsight, now that I know in this way that the full team is of course it's there last year and you can stop there. So radio levels are extremely nervous because nobody wants to commit a mistake of that act. And uh, an Indian press are dense. So uh, what happens is that in X-ray, the tissue mass appears white, the tumor is white, so the contrast is poor, and it's easy to miss the cancer. So, they came to us 10, 15 years back to the world of some breast cancer systems. So now that the body of no grand machine, it comes with a machine learning. There's a machine learning system that is trained on in the US in white people. And you transfer that context to Delhi, right? So there are unpredictable results that, that happen, right? So uh, this is a transfer context bias that is very common, and this requires incredible testing. It also looks for what is your algorithm focus? What are you looking for? What is the classification accuracy that you want? Which kind of misclassifications are more costly in your optimization, right? What are the parameters that you set in your optimization in your loss function? And that's a choice that somebody has made. Now, if the choice affects the human being, that you know, this type of a breast cancer uh, is more, pay more attention in my cross entropy loss function, that's a particular algorithm choice that somebody has made. Without understanding that what is the consequence of that when it plays out in the doctor. So those are those are difficult issues. Um, this one, Microsoft uh, released uh, something called a Twitter chatbot five years back, right? That would tweet responses for Microsoft automatically using the first version of the large language. And it was uh, believed to be wonderful. It's one of the best AI systems that ever was developed. And it will ran well for six months in Microsoft lowered guard. And three, four months later, one day they were a piece of complaint that the machine learning system had learned to give values. Right? And absolutely kill the guy suit and insults to whoever was talking to. So there were just a few people who interacted with an account language. Right? And it spoke back a few foul language, got reinforcement, positive reinforcement, reward in the end optimization, and learn to speak it. And now to a benign, polite question, it was given to me. So Microsoft made a huge one and uh, got out of it, you know, really out of it in some way. That's an emerging bias. And, uh, of course, interpretation bias. I would say Shekhar Mandis was an interpretation bias, right? Uh, So what can be, um, you know, to what extent you can trust it? Uh, so you have trained it on a certain data set. And when you're deploying it in the wild, does that throw distribution go over the data or throw the distribution the ship? These are the kind of questions that, you know, the machine learning deployment will probably have to keep in mind. Uh, uh, without a human in the loop. So for example, uh, I found out that the machine learning system that we have given it in, they're very happy. You know, it is picking up all um, cancers, it is giving uh, alerts to the doctor, they're delighted. But happens in the health department has passed a dictat that no doctor or a resident is allowed to look at the system before they've written down their own diagnosis. Right? Only after they've written down their own diagnosis are they allowed to look at the system. And it's written in all walls that right? you know, use the system with care. Right? Right. Yes. Um, radio cancer department. So they are they follow they have developed that tool themselves, you know, without us one we didn't want it. So we behaved a little bit like one day. We didn't tell them because we were not aware that it was a system. So we just measure the system and it's good with a test load because I'm just the test it we don't plan publish. We need a hospital validation for a uh, top class complication. And that was the only thing that we were looking for at that time. But yes, there is a possibility that doctor's behavior can get influenced by a machine learning system. 
the machine learning system is saying this, and it was correct last five times. So six times it may have must also be correct. Yeah? I mean, this is a common mistake that can happen. Um, but thankfully, the head of the department was aware of this. Aware of this. Research. Is there any data now on what is the accuracy? I think that it's very good. We have to be trained with the problem is and it's going on and on. We have probably now it's our third paper in radio. Uh, because uh, you know it's a it's a feedback. So we are improving it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So yes, and uh, it's a good thing, but you know, I am getting aware of some risks of the system that I was not aware of uh, when we deployed. So the question is that this is always the question, you know, humans more reliable than machine. And uh, when are machines better than humans? And what about accountability? You know, for example, uh, weapons. International Committee of Red Cross is extremely worried about weapons. In an armed conflict, armed conflicts are unavoidable. Right? And, I mean, people will fight with whatever they have, right? But when they fight, the International Committee of Red Cross wants you to fight under some laws. Don't build, don't bomb hospitals, don't uh, bomb civilians, you know, there's some. You know, uh, that kind of uh, that kind of a thing. So the question is that, that once you have decided that you have to kill, like we decided that we have to kill in Balako, somebody is telling me to do. Now who should do that to kill? A machine or a but who do we take the aim? Right? Now there is a huge debate, and I see. Actually, as, uh, I have attended three of them, but there are many. So many would say that this, um, it's much easier for the machine to take an aim when it's more difficult. You know, human beings say they get nervous, their hands say, right? So if you have decided to kill somebody, send the machine. It can say in darkness, it can aim correctly. There's got a much higher accuracy of taking the correct thing, right? Most of them. But then you have to trust machine learning at some stage. So these are pretty things. So at most times it will do better. But occasionally it can catastrophically fail, right? And you can fail. And the trouble is the easy case for the human and the easy case for the machine, they will be the same. Right. So suddenly in the middle of the room, there's a child and the machine is you know, self driving car. They fail to recognize that child and not at all. But every human being will see it. But on the whole, if you ask it to drive to Bowman that Street, my blood pressure will rise 20 points, and you know, I'll start being gullies um, and behave in a not non professional manner. It will not lose its food, and it will probably rise to that place correctly most time. So it's a tricky situation and a tricky question that which one should you use at, at what point in time? So this is, um, you know, good fellow who has one of the best books on machine learning. Maybe on his way to the award, which is like the Nobel Prize in Computer Science. And this is from his book. So he has got one of the best books in machine learning. And he says that you can read this. So he says that these algorithms have built a potent village that works well on naturally occurring data, but is exposed as fake when present points in the data space that do not have high probability in the data. Right? So reliability testing and reliability issue in data science and any data driven uh, actually most people are trying to suggest that you know in this day of data science, see as a computer scientist, when I was trained, um, you know, when we were at IC and I was doing my PhD and I learned computer science, one most important lesson was never trust. Always through your children, never, never, never trust again, right? And always trust your own theory and have a corroborating theory before you use the data. So data can only validate, but cannot. And now, you know, when I'm almost retiring from computer science, that's why even with the time to split, so complete. And almost all the systems that we deploy are entirely data driven, you know, such as these. And, uh, and you're a fool if you're going to want your theory. Right? Or, or, or you know, some is so unfortunate. So, so things are a little uh, tricky, and most probably you guys will have to deal with it more. These are GANs. This is generative AI. Generative AI. So, three of these images are not real. They're generated by AI. So, you can go to chat GPT 
and uh, ask that GPT that, you know, generate a photo of my would be girlfriend in the beaches of Diva, and I want her to have long hair and wear this dress. In fact, you will give you that. Right? If you say that give it a video of her with me, that GPT will generate such a fictitious person with your arms around her and generate that video. Right? And your mother won't be able to tell that it's a fake video or a fake video. So, uh, and uh, well, lots of students are doing pranks, and I'm sure that it's it is just for the credit house to get a paid version of chat GPT and it'll do it. So, these three methods, I have even forgotten. I alternated it. One fake, one real. So three of these versions are not real. They're generated by chat GPT from a verbal description. Right? And now I can't say this one is off. You know, when I prepare the slides. Uh, this is exactly the same principle under which chat GPT works for land. You can say that give me an answer for this question and ask for this. It doesn't understand what a human being is, where the node should be, and so on. So it's just putting the node there. Because that's a high probability that the node is not any above your eyes and below, right? And so, so that's that the joint probability distribution of that is high. So that's why the thing is generally correct. So uh, so most of your interactions with AI is is this. And you know, um, if you look at the industrial data. From the open AI researchers who developed this technology to the deployments by Microsoft and Google, with the usage by insurance companies, this becomes more and more true. Right? So they try to say that AI has sentiments, it has got cognition, or it has got consciousness. And there are industry debates that this is conscious, otherwise, how could it produce this? Right, and there are people. I read a story that a young girl she become emotionally dependent on that video. If she is emotionally troubled, she doesn't talk to her mother or her boyfriend. Even, right, she talks to that video and takes solace from it. And uh, yeah, so uh, and some people are putting that to say that that is that is cognition, but that is not cognition. That is just probability distribution, right? And. Uh, so the Turing test is, uh, you know, Turing gave this test, and uh, this test is the gospel, you know. So he said that, what is the test that you want to do? And his test for intelligence is that when a human judge cannot tell whether I'm talking to a machine or a man, that's when you were arguing with human intelligence, right? So no philosopher will accept this as a value test. Because this test is behavior. So you can have, even in a probability distribution, you can have the same marginal distribution of the observables, right, with infinite human probabilities. So you can have just that you've got a certain behavior, a probability distribution of the marginal distribution of the observables, doesn't mean that you have a right system. You have an entirely wrong system, and that can be the same thing. It's simple, right? The Turing test is very similar. So there's just that you can produce languages, you can produce images, you can produce video, does not mean that you have any understanding of it, right? And uh, imagining so and trusting it for your physics exam to be uh, risky, you know? So that's sort of mildly put. Okay, I'll um, skip this part. I'll spend a little bit of time on making decisions about people because uh, this is a uh, this is the other aspect that is becoming very crucial, right? When you go to a house home, so maybe at your age, a motorcycle home, right? They'll look at something called a civil score. The civil score will come from how much credit you're taking and how accurate you're paid back loan and so on and so forth. If you are in an organization where I thought for 32 years, like I do, they will immediately ask you to write a test in physics, chemistry, mathematics, and when you go to the school in 42. Now that's a machine learning system, and then decide whether you're fit to study physics or computer science, right? So that's exactly a scoring system and a scoring based machine learning system. And I think that uh, you will find it harder and harder to run away from it in some way. So, what is the model? The real world state of the world, right? About human beings. We make some measurements on which like the JE exam, that's a measurement. 
and you convert that to a data, right? Or your TNT history record and you convert that to a data. And then you create a model, data driven model using learning. And that affects the life of the individual. So there's a feedback. This means you can change the individual's behavior. And sooner or later, the individual will learn this model. Individual is also learning. So it's a, it's a vicious feedback in which we get caught at, uh, at very various points in time. Your credit worthiness, your credit worthiness has got is a statement of your morality that if you take loans, we will pay back in time. Right? Now, the question that you need to ask is that, that does this measurement that generates the data is even adequate to make such a, uh, such a decision about it? Right? No, you may be uh, 18 years old, right? And somebody catches you and says that now the law of testing is chemistry mathematics, and I'll decide whether you're fit to study computer science. Right? Now, whether that physics, chemistry, and math test in the short one hour can even capture your ability to study computer science is a question that uh, you know that requires much more theory, I would say, okay. The old measurements, right? In, uh, so it's only now that in computer science we are trying to develop theories and measurements, information theory. That if you try to make a measurement to make a decision, is that even information theoretically sound so that you can make that decision, right? And these theories are at a very nascent stage. I have a couple of papers, but these are not, we don't know enough about this to deploy systems in the real world. But you know, such systems, are, I mean, nobody will listen to us. Such systems are getting deployed with a day. So this is one, you know, data to model. So I knew that this will work. Uh, this will pay. This, by the way, pays in Bengali. I showed this example that, you know, so I just give it to this is Google Class. That's a large language model. So I just said that she's a doctor, he's a nurse. I uh, asked it to convert to Punjabi. I didn't read Punjabi. So whatever it did, I put it back here and asked it to reverse translate, right? And uh, look, the gender has changed. So it thinks that uh, there is a gender power equation in the in the doctor. So I was very curious what will happen in Bengal. Exactly the same. Thing. You did also in Bengal. I didn't do. No, I didn't. Uh, uh, you know, I first tried in Punjabi. Mm. She and he. Same. Uh, not different pronouns. No, but still, right? And uh, so I tried in 17 Indian languages. I did this with, in Punjabi and Haryana because that's where I was teaching this bias. But then it occurred to me that Bodhyana ke aata, Bengali ne ke aata. But this whole order is uh, actually amazingly, this is also true for Spanish and French. Yeah. So, so I tried it. It's almost in Barring one or two, it, this hopeless experiment uh, succeeded in most cases. Now, this is the trouble that if you are trying to get gender equity, you cannot get it from language. Right? The language is already biased in uh, already biased in some ten years, right? And it's natural views and so on. So, on. so you have to build in something extra if you don't want this translation, right? And uh, this is what. Uh, I found last month, you know, March 2024, UNESCO suddenly came up with this large report on pervasive gender bias and gender AI and chat A serious complaint to uh, OpenAI and Google and uh, asking them to stop deploying their system and pull them back till you address this issue, right? This is why I'm right? nobody will listen to them, right? It is a stone problem, it cannot be taken back anymore. But this is not surprising. You know, I'm not surprised because, you know, the gender, gender bias is already. So what are these issues, you know? So you are doing credit uh, uh, in biometric matching, fingerprint, iris recognition, and credit rating, credit to those. So if you're saying that, you know, triple I Delhi is bad in the AI algorithm for Delhi police to say that in which part of Delhi they should deploy more policemen, right? That there are uh, so many women policemen should descend into Jahangirpuri or South Delhi, House Park, where I live, and uh, 
So should, this is the one that is the most uh, incredible. So this is, let me explain this to you because the history of why I started from here. So apparently in the United States, for petty crimes for young criminals, and young criminals are between 17 to 20, right? Of course, so when the crime has happened, is decided by a jury, but the sentencing is by a judge, right? And most judges apparently find this sentence in the hardest. Because what sentence will you give to a 17 year old girl? And they are scared that if you let them, you know, maybe she has stolen a while. Now, if you let her go without any punishment, she may interpret that as sabbat way. Right? On the other hand, if you send her to prison for two years, you may actually make a criminal okay. out of her for a small crime. And uh, the judges are very uncomfortable with the sentence. If somebody, some smart ally, thought of why not a machine learning system? So they find out that risk for a recidivist yes, means that the, the chance of a repeat offense. So they said that what are the chances? The repeat offense chances are half, given a risk, give her a half a sentence. Right? And there was an old switch in the United States where using machine learning system for sentence, or at least taking guidance for a machine learning system for it. And the judge in Connecticut found that a young black girl should show a white sentence. And he was curious that in a two year sentence for a white sentence scene. So it turned out that she apparently had to go to a party and she was late. So she just found somebody's bicycle road five kilometers and abandoned it somewhere and went and went into the party. And her scene was just a just that she didn't get a wife, you know, she's so And they sent her away to prison for two years, you know, remand home, you and I remand home. And they just thought it's so hard. So they just wanted the history that is a white American girl committed this time, would the punishment be the same? The answer was yes, it will be the same. So he said that, you know, show me all over the United States, the probability distribution of a sentence. And it turned out it's completely skewed. Skewed. That a black girl will get a much harsher sentence. So a white girl will get the least sentence, followed by a white boy, followed by a black yeah. girl, and then what's this black girl? Black boy. So, you know, the so, so the judge said that you know, given that you got such different rates for the same crime, uh, he banned it in the state of Connecticut. He passed a motion, got it to the chief justice of Connecticut, and got the system banned. Rapidly over the next three months, it got banned all over the United States. This was uh, seven or eight years back. And that's when people started to ask this question that what does it mean to take decisions by two such as these, right? And uh, maybe I'll just take two minutes. The machine has just picked up from the existing yeah. data. Yeah. 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 That's right. Because the track of so maybe the humans also had that data. So here is a here is a admission score. This was published by University of Bodhi uh, from their graduates, right? So their GPA and interview scores, and this is the positive cutoff. So these were the people who were selected, and these were the people who were rejected, right? And these are the mixture of GPA and the score. Two colors. Two colors are two categories. I am not telling you what the two categories are, right? There are two different types of people. They can be gender, they can be race, they can be, you know, some protected category. So what do you think? That was the decision fair. This is for which subject? No, this is just a job. Just job. job interview on the GPA, right? This is the interview score, this is the GPA. GPA is your, like, percentage marks, right? And, uh, yeah, so what do we say? Is this fair or unfair? You know, the company score. And what why you want me? So the greener guys are ready for the day. Right, good. This is what the rest of the business, right? That the greener guys are ready for the greener guys are getting a better day. Because you know you have to different dates. But maybe there can be some valid reason for the greener guys. Right. Yes. Then for this particular job, maybe they I'm had some quality 
they probably put in two years of work in some way that is not measured by this. Right? So it's very hard to say. And uh, this is like the SNL industry. And this is the gender problem. So the green were boys. And the blue were men. And the blue were... Yeah. And um, so this kind of a you know, pure data driven, where you're taking away your judgment factor and using a machine, you will get into this kind of a dilemma. So typically what this says is that then any decision making, this is a distribution of the positive, this is a distribution of the negatives, right? And you will make a threshold. And in this case, your threshold will be out there, right? So this side is a positive, this side is a negative. So you will always have an area under the, whatever decision you make, you will have an area under the wrong side. So you will always have false positive, you will always have false positive, right? So that's called your specificity and sensitivity of your decision making. So in machine learning, we said that true acceptance rate is, uh, is the sensitivity and false acceptance rate is one minus the specific. So whenever you take a decision, there is a sensitivity and the specificity of your decision making. So you will make always some errors. Now look at this. How will you optimize the true positive rate and the false positive rate in the machine learning? Right? No, different people have different tasks, right? So, for example, law enforcement, suppose you're the police, and you're doing fingerprint matching, right? What would you want? You want a high specificity, high sensitivity, high specificity. Now, true acceptance rate and false acceptance rate are both important parameters, too, right? You want a true acceptance rate, and you want a no false acceptance rate because you don't want criminals to uh, run away, right? And you want these both. But what will a judge, Supreme Court judge, or civil rights activist? They say I may 1,000 criminals run away, but don't punish a innocent person. Innocent person. So they will say that you know a false positive is not acceptable. If you are doing twenty one, they can go to school, right? Or if you are doing welfare, this worker, then false negative is not acceptable. Just because your fingerprint does not match, you cannot deny truth to something, right? What does society mean? Society will want that, you know, even if you have low accuracy, I don't care, but your false negative rate and false positive rate across, across the two genders must be the same, right? So you're not discriminating, you're not partial. You know, across regions must be the same, across costs must be the same, right? And your deduplication means, you know, so, so there's different from what point of view you're coming at. Your objective function will be different, right? And whose objective function will win in this case? The guy who paid for it, right? In this case, police. If police went to the system, right? So that you'll be tuned towards that. And it will not be tuned towards any one of these. And there is a theorem. Uh, so let me just give me two minutes, two, three minutes, right? So there are two doctrines of discrimination. Uh, a protected class is, uh, you know, gender is a protected class, religion is a protected class. So unless permitted by law, we are not allowed to make decisions from this these uh, protected classes, right? And uh, Article 15 of the Constitution says that you're not allowed to use this to make any decision. All you mentioned number is allowed any of these things. So nobody uses it. Machine learning system don't use it. But machine learning system use a variety of inputs, which may be correlated with a, which may be a proxy for the peripheral systems. Right? So a gender, a race, or a region may creep in. To some of the variables, to some of the proxies. That's disparate impact. And both Indian Supreme Court and the US Supreme Court has ruled that disparate impact is also bad. So if you have to measure so if you treat them to some method, then it's a crime. And uh, I won't get into this in great detail, but I'll just show that there is this result from a great algorithm called Kleinberg, which D016 shows. That all these different tasks from different people, that you have got individual calibration, you have a group by scale, and you've got uh, uh, 
your decision is independent of protected classes and so on. So, so this is in general an impossible situation unless your data lies in a very narrow manifold. So your data is well behaved and there is no injustice in the society. And you collected your data from perfectly just society, only then you will be able to build a machine learning system that will not distribute. Okay. So just that when you are building a machine learning system, system your discrimination in public life is not going to work it or can actually manifest in incredibly massive ways. Right. And uh, when you are deploying, you know, as physics students, maybe you will not deploy so many, but you will be on the receiving of some machine learning. I mean, every day in case of machine learning system, somewhere or if you use a cell phone, you will do that every day, even with a simple thing like a movie at the But when Amazon is selling you, showing you an ad, it is profiled you and it is trying to sort of uh, direct your behavior in a certain way. Right? Uh, so you have to be aware of their desired set of So I had a few more slides, but I think I've, I've said more or less what I wanted to say. So I'll stop it. There are questions. Thank you, Professor Energy, for this thought provoking aspect of the more technical things. The questions? Abhi? So basically, very good. So that you stored that yeah, the principal data, the era, yeah, and the AI is related with our sensing and laptop and so AI also replacing the IT, because it's replacing the voice IT, as well as it is uh, using the voice. So I knew that it is replacing the daily market and then the daily conversation. So I think at, uh, at some point the AI should be restricted. So what is your point about 